Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Alyssa Corum and Justin Nielsen here. And Justin, it was another nice day in the market. Why don't you go ahead and give us a rundown of the three stocks that we're going to be analyzing today? Yeah, we'll go ahead and talk a little bit about AstraZeneca. This is another one that's in the coronavirus vaccine race. Uh, we'll also yes. talk a little bit about Chipotle Mexican Grill. A lot of the restaurant stocks doing okay today. And MasterCard, this is one that was sitting out for a while, but it looks like it's setting up for a new pattern and uh, could be looking at a breakout. All right. Well, first, let's take a look at those major indexes. This is a chart of the NASDAQ, which tacked on a gain of six tenths of a percent for the day. The Dow up nine tenths of a percent and the S&P 500 up nine tenths of a percent as well. Justin, you mentioned these vaccine hopes. We're also uh, getting bank earnings, fueling more gains in the market and so uh, Ken and I talked yesterday about this, this uh, almost uncanny support that we're seeing at the 21 day line for the NASDAQ. Uh, so some nice strength again today. Yeah, uh, th that's, that's really the big story here is that 21 day. If you look all the way back to the follow through day, you know, back in April, April 6th, um, since that move, it has really obeyed that 21 day moving average line and, and just a ridiculously you know, steady fashion. So um, it seems like it's, it's done that today. Now, uh, done that again this time. Now, Monday's reversal was dramatic, you know, no, no question about it. And um, while we did see, you know, previous reversals that quickly recovered, went right back into new high ground uh, for the NASDAQ, um, this one didn't do the same thing where it was back into new high ground in two days. Um, that's actually good. You know, I actually mm -hmm. prefer that we're taking a little bit of time here. Um, it, it was a nice close today. And if you go to the weekly chart real quick, uh, here's, here's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at this week, where, where is it going to close in, in its range this week? You know, that was a big outside week. Um, that's where the high is above the previous week's high. The low is lower than the previous week's low. Um, so the outside week gives you a sense of direction. Um, but it really depends on where it closes. If it closes in the upper part of the range, that kind of tells you that the expectation is higher. If it closes in the lower part of the range, the expectation is lower. So right now, um, we are in that upper part of the range. I'd like to see it get a little bit higher, um, actually go above last week's close. And that could, again, show that this, this recovery is, uh, or mm -hmm. I guess the downside reversal is pretty much going to be a non-event again. But uh, yeah. if it does take some time here, that would be good. Right. And you know what else I like about the last couple of days of action is it finally provided an opportunity for some of the high flyers uh, yeah. you know, that didn't ever even really take a breath at all to pull back sooner. Like DocuSign, for example, we're finally starting to see the, the beginnings of, of potentially new bases for some of these big movers. But let's take a look at some stocks on our radar today, starting off with AstraZeneca, A-Z-N, also, as you mentioned, Justin, in the vaccine race, up about 7.4% today in huge volume. So a nice gap up here for the stock over that 57 level. Yeah. So this is where you have to be kind of uh, a, a little careful, you know, because, okay, you have the Moderna news out, um, you know, they're, they're looking forward to a phase three with their vaccine. Um, this is a little bit of speculation. There was a report by ITV.com, an online publication that AstraZeneca and University of Oxford are going to be publishing in Lancet, um, you know, some of the results from their clinical trials. So th this is a little bit of speculation on that report. AstraZeneca, uh, to my knowledge, hasn't sent anything out yet. Um, and when you have a big gap up like this through that buy point, while this is in buy range, this is a lot of movement for a single day. So um, th th this does warrant some caution. Um, you also, this is earnings season. So that's something that you just have to be aware of. Know where your earnings are. I believe that AstraZeneca is coming out on July 30th. So that doesn't give you too much time uh, to, to get some cushion before that earnings report comes out. Yeah, and as you mentioned, the speculative nature of today's move, something to keep in mind with all the different players in the, the medical area that we've seen pop on right. coronavirus news and, and seeing a lot of volatility as a result of that. And you know what, let's maybe do a quick uh, twofer. Yeah. Um, maybe pull up okay. CRL okay. Um, okay. as well. CRL. Um, because uh, Charles River Labs, you know, also had a breakout out of a flat base. And uh, this was the IBD stock of the day. And, yes. you know, 
they, they do a lot of the testing, you know, um, uh, clinical trial, you know, they provide animals, um, they do some of the cellular, you know, things. So um, definitely read that IBD stock of the day, because I think that that could give you a good sense of what's going on with this company as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a little bit more time uh, to get a cushion ahead of earnings in early August, it looks like, right. for that one. And moving on, let's take a look at Chipotle here uh, with a nice uh, rebound off of that 21 day line for this stock uh, in yesterday's set, continuing gains today up 2.8%. So it is uh, still above this buy point and within this 5% buy range here, Justin, what do you think? Exactly. That's, that's, that's why I like this chart right now is because it did get support at the 21 day. That was just a little bit below that buy area, that, that you know, perfect pivot that you drew that line at, um, just a little bit below. It did cross above that, come back in. Um, that does happen a lot. You know, that mm -hmm. does happen in 40 to 50% of the cases, according to uh, studies by William O'Neill. Uh, you'll have a breakout that does pull back to the pivot. And that's, that's what happened here, just a little bit below. But as you mentioned, uh, that blue shaded area in MarketSmith kind of tells you where pattern recognition has identified the, the buy zone. You know, we try and go within 5% of that buy range and CMG is still right in there. Yes, clearing prior resistance and not chasing stocks. We definitely don't want to be doing that. So those buy ranges yeah, are- Yeah, especially in a market like this where you know things are up so much, it's very easy to you know be chasing mm -hmm. stocks, you know, get that feeling of missing out, you know, the whole FOMO thing. And Tesla you know, is a, you, a great example. Yeah, by the time <laughs> you finally get in, yeah, you know, it's right? it, it's too late, and that that's when the mm -hmm. correction comes. So uh, for all of those people that were maybe looking last week and you know finally said, oh, I got to get into this market, you know, Monday was a, a real big slap in the face. Yeah, me. real rude awakening there. All right, and last but not least, Mastercard. As you mentioned, you know, before the coronavirus crash, this one was you know squarely on our radar. Just a really solid track record of strong growth here and strong fundamentals as well. Uh, took quite a break here with the coronavirus crash, but it's now finally perking up here, Justin. What are your thoughts today? Would you wait for this 316 or would you be eyeing some sort of downward sloping trend line today? You, you, you nailed it there. I'm eyeing that, that nice downward sloping trend line that gives you an aggressive entry in here. And one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this up, you know, as you mentioned, it it's kind of seemed like this is a little bit of a laggard. You look at the relative strength line, it's not that great. The relative strength rating is 69. Um, but there does seem to be a little bit of sector rotation right now. You know, the S&P 500 is kind of flexing its muscles a little bit. And you've got some of the stocks, you know, that are, you know, in the Dow Jones Industrial Average that are also flexing their muscles. So um, materials, you know, home construction, um, some of the areas that just weren't participating as much were kind of coming on a little bit stronger today. And so you are seeing some of these patterns form in some of these stocks. And I think MasterCard is a great example. So if you do see that sector rotation, if the some of the high flyers do need a little bit more of a break, uh, that might mean uh, MasterCard could be one for your, uh, for, for your new watch list. Yeah, and just wanna mention here with this one as well, we do have, Earnings around the corner towards the end of the month. I think it's it's always key, like you say, Justin, to to point that out because you want to have enough cushion heading into earnings, and, and that's also a time to be thinking of your watch list during earnings season to see what potentially could be actionable after they report their earnings. Yeah, more than anything, you don't want to be surprised. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. the, the oh yeah. You, yeah <laughs> because, yes. you know, that's that's where, you know, you can just be like, oh, what happened? And it's, you know, you, you don't want to be surprised. But yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. The the earnings report can be a catalyst for so many breakouts. So um, keep that on your radar. If, if you could get into this MasterCard a little bit early, and then let's say the earnings report, you know, puts it over that 316.06, um, that's kind of an ideal situation because you get a little bit of cushion uh, and then the breakout comes on the earnings report, pushes it even further, so. And then maybe you would add there. Absolutely, yeah. All right, good stuff. All right, Justin, thanks so much for your insights today and thank you all for watching and you can be sure that the conversation will continue tomorrow morning on IBD Live. That's our daily morning live stream where, and you, and if you watch the show all the time, you know, it's where our experts share their screens and talk about actionable stocks and investing strategies and the, the game plan for the overall market conditions. And we have a lot of fun. So we hope you join us over at investors.com slash IBD live, but that's it for today. Thanks once again for tuning in and we'll see you right back here tomorrow.